live, guys. We are live with RCW episode 12, Rogue Demons. So we have the highly anticipated matchup happening tonight. So we have, um, for, for our main event, we have Marielle Rogue and Rosemary joining forces to fight the Outlaw Sisters in a Tornado Tag Match. Luna and Sky Outlaw, the Outlaw Sisters, in a Tornado Tag Match later tonight. We also have Jay Rogue, um, you know, who made their... And all of those people made statements, except for Rosemary, um, all those people made statements um, in their own little ways. And uh, Jay Rogue made his statement by attacking... AJ Styles uh, during his match, which which had happened, and we had AJ versus Ricochet, in which J Rogue attacked um, attacked AJ Styles, and so we had that, which is pretty insane if you ask me. Um, then, we had Seth Rollins versus Jeff Hardy, and Seth Rollins won. We had, uh, Luna versus Violet, and Luna won, and Marielle attacked Luna. Marielle Rogue attacked Luna. CM Punk versus Miles Anderson. CM Punk won that match. We also had Brian versus Rey Mysterio in a two out of three falls match, and Brian won that match, but he also... But something else happened after that match, and it was Chris Danger turning on the Outlaws. Um, turning on Brian Outlaw specifically. Thank you for the host. Hannah, I appreciate it. Are we working as far as everything sound-wise? Is everything working? My, my thing might just be really low volume. Yes, it is. Okay, so at least we got Twitch alerts working again. Um, amazingly. We got the bot working again. Sick. Okay, cool. Um, so we had that. Um, I believe Chris Danger made a statement in regards to that attack. And it... And he said, It had to be done. What has been inside has been dangerous, waiting to be free. End of the line. Dangerous. Rogue. Call it what you want. But it had to be done. And that's not really much of a reasoning... Um, behind that, um, as far as uh, why Chris Danger attacked uh, Brian Outlaw, turning on the Outlaws. So as far as um, <laughs> as far as Chris Danger goes, we don't know if he's aligning himself with the Rogues or what's happening. But before we continue with the show, I don't know if you guys seen this on Instagram. Um, but I finally have an official WWE belt. Um, I actually picked this up from Amazon for $200. This is the WWE World Heavyweight Championship commemorative belt. And basically, it is the replica belt that you see on television. Um, just lighter. So this is the lighter version of the replica belt. Um, there's not much of a difference in looks and stuff like that. The replica belt is really heavy. Um, you can wear this if you want to. You know, it clips. It clips. I plan to hang this up on my wall, actually. And then, um, if I ever go to wrestling events, take it to wrestling events with me. But, you know, here's the belt. I know it's kind of hard to see because of the way the camera is now. But, you know, if you want to see a more detailed uh, photo, I could probably post it in the Discord. Or I have a really good picture of it on my Instagram. I'm really excited to have it. Uh, you know, it's a, definitely a thing that a true wrestling fan like me really wants, and and I wanted it, even though it was quite a bit of money, and uh, but it looks cool, uh, and uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, we had CM Punk make his debut against Miles Anderson, too, as well, last episode, so, you know, CM Punk, you know, he was very hard to negotiate with. Um, you know, everybody knows the WWE story and how uh, he uh, left WWE because Vince wouldn't give him a main event at WrestleMania. 
and basically he just didn't like the way WWE was being run. Can't say I blame him. Um, but that remains to be seen here. Um, so we'll have Jay Rogue here. I made a couple additions to his attire. This is his second attire. His his other attire I still have, but I really like um, uh, his uh, attire that I've made. Otherwise, you know the arm braces, the the difference in the mask and stuff. Remember, our main event tonight will be the Outlaw Sisters versus Marielle Rogue and Rosemary in a tag tornado tag match. No disqualification, no rules, and I think it's Sky really wanting to get revenge on um, Marielle for attacking her sister Luna in last episode. So. We'll have that. Also, Paige will be back in action on Wednesday after being medically cleared by RCW staff. As far as from Brian, he is okay from that in from that really uh, vulgar attack and uh, heinous attack, I should say. And uh, J Rogue definitely making a. Statement threatening to break necks. Saying it doesn't matter to him who, what he has to do or who he has to go through. And that's exactly really what the rogues are all about. By the way, I have a highlight package that includes Marielle Rogue and J Rogue. Um, and that a preview for that is on my Instagram at BotchTTV. I plan to release it on YouTube. Actually, the music that you hear in that is actually from the YouTube sound library. And it's basically non-copyrighted music. Music that you can use without getting a copyright strike for YouTube. Um, and it actually sounded pretty good. And it goes pretty well with the package. So I'm really excited to get that done. I have about 30 seconds worth of it done. Um, and that's kind of a preview that you see. I just go out and achieve, so I'm not wasting another word on this. Definitely, you'll see Jay Rogue in action soon, but he is also in lockdown. We will continue that on Friday in the uh, MWE Fractured Championship Tournament, so that should be very exciting. But I love the new attire. I think it's kind of cool just to see um, some of the... And something a little different. As far as Marielle's attire, I really just like her other attire, so we're just going to keep it the way it is. Um, but hopefully you guys will enjoy the show just like you have always enjoyed it. And I told you guys, the Tag Team Champions, the White Dragons, Phoenix, and Saber would be in action. So they are. Here they are against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. So, also, I got a chance to talk to uh, Jake. Uh, you guys know him as the assistant GM of the show, and I haven't talked to him in a long time um, from up to this point. But I got a chance to talk to him, and he was... Oh, my mouse just dropped. Oh, or something dropped. I don't know what it was. Oh, it was the USB thing. Um, I had a chance to talk to him, and he expressed how disappointed he was um, for not... You know, really helping out with the show too much, um, or at least in his eyes, not really helping out with the show. And I told him that we were on season four, and he couldn't believe it. Like, he was mind boggled. Um, because I came to talk to him about um, season one and season two, um, you know, towards the beginning of the show, and he couldn't believe that we were on season. Um, season four that we're on season four currently i also had to remake the rcw arena so i apologize if there's anything like different that you guys see in here i had to remake it because me being stupid i accidentally um uh deleted it by mistake i didn't mean to but that's just kind of how it happened but we have the good news is is we have you know, the right names for everything. So it's no longer going to say RCW World Tag Team Championship and then show the things. So I got around to fixing that. 
um, which is fantastic. So the White Dragons looking to continue their dominance after beating the Outlaws in a very uh, controversial ending, or a very uh, eye-opening ending, I should say, with Jason Outlaw trying to distract the referee, possibly trying to get in to help his brother, and that ended up costing the Outlaws the championship. Now, some of you may be wondering what is next for the Outlaws. Now, just because they might not be tag team partners anymore doesn't matter um, or doesn't mean that they'll never tag again um, so that is good news in regards to that I guess I'm not controlling him I don't know why but I guess I'm not I was actually uh, testing out a couple skills. The saber puts down the skill steps there. I was testing out a like a couple skills in terms of like um, you know the ladder uh, bridged power bomb where you can power bomb somebody through a bridged uh, ladder and, and stuff like that. And I was testing out a lot of the the new skills that I added to um, some of the wrestlers and. It's actually pretty cool, you know, creating those sort of elements here on RCW. I think it's I think it's pretty awesome, and I think you guys are gonna like what some of the new additions is Phoenix Irish whipping Kevin Owens, but Kevin Owens with the reversal and, and Kevin Owens with the clothesline in the corner and distracting the referee a little bit from. This is not like, uh, this is not like Saber, but Irish whipping Kevin Owens to the corner. Now tagging in Saber. Now Saber's in this matchup, and uh oh, looks like they're doing some double team maneuver here. And wow, what a double team maneuver by the White Dragons. And I don't even know why I'm control. Why am I controlling? Two different versions of them. I have no idea why this is what. Whatever it is, it's fine. Whatever it is, it's okay. Oh, I could have controlled Sami Zayn there. I could have grabbed him there. Should have. See if I can get in the ring and help. <laughs> See if Phoenix can get in the ring and help his tag team partner here. But Saber looked. Look to reverse it. And Irish look to the corner. Tags in Phoenix again. Uh-oh, what are they doing? Tossing Phoenix with a cross body. And again, the double team work from the tag team champions. And Phoenix getting out of the ring there. Uh-oh. But stopping. Stopping Sami Zayn from suplexing his partner there. Good job being at the right place at the right time. And what a move there by Phoenix. Again an Irish whip. But Sami Zayn able to reverse it. But Saber paying dividends. And allowing Phoenix to gain to get back into this as he was dazed there for a little bit. Uh-oh. I thought he was saying he was trying for the hot tag there. He rolls out. Irish whipping. Kevin Owens holding Phoenix, helping out Sami Zayn. Phoenix with a reversal and a clothesline onto the outside. And Saber having to watch and wait here. This is very smart teamwork, not allowing Kevin Owens to get in this match. And I think Saber is looking to take care of Kevin Owens and takes him off the apron. Now working on Kevin Owens now. Five. 
Count of five there. I think what we're going to see here, we're going to see Phoenix or Saber trying to attack Sami Zayn there. That came to backfire in a suplex. But rolls to the outside of the ring. Sami Zayn is the legal man still. Sami Zayn is the legal man. I don't... I don't think he realized that he was the legal man in this matchup here. As the referee begins the count, though. And Sami Zayn, again, not realizing that... Saber's there taking Kevin Owens down now. Saber doing absolutely everything that he can. As Saber hasn't been in this match too much. And a count of six. Oh, I thought it was... And again, Saber helping out. Devin Owens had a count of two in the ring here. As Saber is taking care of Kevin Owens here on the outside, making sure that Sammy cannot make the tag. To his partner in a blue thunder bomb. And again making sure that Sammy cannot make the tag. Going after Sammy Zayn now. Going after Sammy Zayn. And Saber is just doing everything. He hasn't been legally in this match, but he's been doing absolutely everything that he can, though, to help out his tag team partner. Oh, and a roll up! But the referee got distracted in Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, I thought Kevin Owens broke that pin up there, but I guess not. Uh oh, and a halufa kick! Oh! Now Saber getting attacked by Sami Zayn as Kevin Owens tried to intercept that a little bit. And taking Sami Zayn down. Lifting up Phoenix. You got three. But Kevin Owens somehow got in this match as Sami Zayn finally able to make the tag to Kevin Owens. But Kevin Owens, remember, he was damaged very heavily on the outside here. Some good work from Saber as Phoenix looking to finish this up with a Phoenix Driver. Lifts him up here. Phoenix Driver by Phoenix. and Again, making sure that Sami Zayn trying to grab Sami Zayn. And Kevin Owens kicks out anyway. And Saber grabbing Sami Zayn, tossing him inside the ring. Now working on Kevin Owens' leg. The Saber. Getting up and, and taking. And now Saber asking for a tag after all that he's been through in this match. It's even on the outside. He hasn't been in this match too much. And Phoenix, or Saber, finally gets tagged in this match and another double team maneuver by these two. And Kevin Owens kicks out at two. I don't think that's going to be enough. And Phoenix taking care of Sami Zayn here on the outside and a drop kick to the back of Sami Zayn. A saber. Working on Kevin Owens, but Kevin Owens looking to break out of this. 
Couple of shots in the midsection, but Phoenix is right behind him, helping out his partner. Making sure what's happening on the inside of the ring. And again, Kevin Owens kicks out at two. I think Sabre needs to be more... Needs to be uh, smarter about his covering attempts. Oh, I thought Kevin Owens might be going for a cannonball there. Reversal by Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens looking to do something big, but Phoenix able to stop him with a European uppercut and trying for a drop kick. No. And Sabre ends up getting clotheslined anyway. And Phoenix dives right on. Kevin Owens sacrificing his body, but Phoenix still in big trouble here in a clothesline on the outside of the ring. And Sami Zayn is on the outside working away, and Kevin Owens on the top rope here. This can't be good. What he's going for here and trying to go for a splash of some sort, but only met the outside. And Sami Zayn trying to work on Saber a little bit, and now decides to go back to the apron as both men are down now. And Phoenix taking care of Kevin Owens. And then Phoenix going after Sami Zayn now. Count of seven and Sabre knows gets back in the ring. Now working on the leg of Kevin Owens. Uh-oh, Kevin Owens plowing Sami Zayn over. Looking for the pop-up powerbomb here, but Sabre being very smart. But Phoenix! Pop-up powerbomb on Phoenix. I don't think he realizes, though, that Phoenix isn't the legal man, so that doesn't matter what just happened. And Kevin Owens took out the referee. Man, a lot has been happening in this tag team matchup here to start off the show. I don't, I, I don't know if Kevin Owens didn't realize that Phoenix wasn't the legal man. Or maybe he was just looking to clean up the pieces a little bit. But the referee able to get back to his bearings a little bit. And Sabre now on the comeback is Phoenix looking to take care of Sami Zayn. And he does. And Sabre's on the comeback and he gets... Kevin Owens down. Maybe Saber could just be one step away from getting that super kick. And Phoenix helping out his partner again with a Samoan drop. And on the apron now. It's Phoenix and Going after Sami Zayn, trying to go after the Sami Zayn with a double axe handle, and that Sami Sami Zayn, these two kind of playing a little bit of mind games on the outside here, and Kevin Owens going for something big here on the top rope, but Phoenix is right there to stop him, helping up his tag team partner as he's a little bit groggy, but he'll get over that. And I don't know what Kevin Owens was thinking of doing there. Maybe attacking Phoenix or what? Irish whip to the corner, though. But Saber able to reverse. Uh-oh. Looking for a nightmare on Kevin Owens. Dragging him to the middle of the ring as Sami Zayn and Phoenix are going at it. Sami Zayn cannot do anything about this. And Saber looking to win this matchup here. One, two, no. Kevin Owens kicks out. Went to the corner and a clothesline into the corner and now. And now Phoenix asking for the tag. Phoenix is asking to finish this matchup up. And I think he's tagging in Phoenix and Phoenix is getting tagged in. Phoenix is getting tagged in and tossing tossing Phoenix with a cross body there. And now Saber. Has to go to the outside now. 
But a back body drop for Kevin Owens there. And, and Sabre having to go in and save his partner a little bit with those kicks to the chest. But Kevin Owens able to make the hot tag to Sami Zayn. Now Sami Zayn is in this match. Now working on Sami Zayn. And Sabre got to make sure... That that he doesn't get disqualified. He's got to the count of five to get out of the ring. And hopefully uh, Phoenix can get back to his bearings as both men are kind of groggy as Sami Zayn is still down. Making sure that Kevin Owens has no part in this matchup. Going for a pin here. One, two, and Sami Zayn's still in it. What an intense tag match we have. As Kevin Owens is hurt everywhere. But Sami Zayn with a reversal. Oh, I think Phoenix got it. Phoenix got it. To the middle rope. And a fist right to the face, busting Sami Zayn wide open. Could that be enough? I doubt it is, but it might be one, two, no. Sami Zayn kicked out again. Again, these little moves aren't going to take any of these men down here. They got to be smarter. Taking down Saber on the outside, and I think Sami tried for a halufa kick there. But to no avail. And Sami Zayn looking for something big here on the... On the top rope. Launching himself with a cross body on the outside. And Sami Zayn is fired up. Remember, they can't win it on the outside, though. The Sabre is down. His partner cannot help him at the moment. Uh-oh. Suplex into the corner there. Now dragging Phoenix to the to the middle of the ring. Or possibly his corner. But Saber is right there. Referee can give him a count of two there. And I thought Kevin Owens was on his way out of here. I thought he was on his way out. It looks like he it looks like he was headed to the exit there. And then Saber again. Uh-oh. I guess Saber tried to help his buddy out there. I don't know, a little bit of miscommunication, I guess. Saber probably tried to get Phoenix out of the corner, but it's kind of not what happened as Sami Zayn tried for a submission there, but Sabre was right there to break that one up. And lifting up his buddy. The Sabre again using the count of five to his advantage here and trying to work on Kevin Owens, making sure that he cannot make the tag as Sami Zayn gets back to his bearings a little bit. And a snap suplex. And Saber is right there to break up that pin. I highly doubt, though, that Phoenix wouldn't have kicked out of that. I mean, that's just a snap suplex. It's not that big of a move. Oh, and a roll-up! A roll-up! By Sami Zayn. But Phoenix kicks out. Oh, I thought he was going to tag Kevin Owens, but Sabre again making sure that doesn't happen. But with the reversal to Owens, again, Sabre making sure that Sami Zayn cannot make that tag dragging. 
Sami Zayn further away from his corner. How long are we going to see this tag matchup last year? I don't think it's going to last too much longer. I mean, all of these men are beat up as Phoenix tried to just end it there. Oh my lord. Sami Zayn with a reversal though. Uh-oh. Sami Zayn seeing something coming here. Sami Zayn caught him in a powerbomb. Taking care of Sabre, but Phoenix able to reverse. That might have just been the time that he needed. Arm drag. And Phoenix is down. Or, I mean, Sabre, sorry. Sabre's down. Not able to help out his partner, Phoenix, at the moment. I don't see the tag team champions being in trouble by any means, but... You know, anything can happen in these tag team matchups. Uh-oh. Looking for that kick. Creeping up on him a little bit. And a kick right to the face of Sami Zayn. One, two. Oh, Kevin was right there. Sabre was down. He couldn't have done anything about it. Otherwise, he might have done something. Irish whip to the corner here. Blue Thunderbomb by Sami Zayn. But Saber stopping him from making the pin. Man, what a tag match this is. This is crazy. This is insane. Both men are down. How does Sammy get up quicker? <laughs> oh, well, that explains it because Phoenix got hit with a bigger move. <gasps> Referee got taken out. I think... I think Saber was just trying to help out his partner and the ref ended up getting taken out, but he helps out the ref. Sami Zayn with a reversal now. And a chop. But that helped. That helped Phoenix. That's going to help Phoenix. That might have helped him. And a rake to the eyes. Now Phoenix is in the worst spot he can be right now. Kevin Owens tosses Saber a little bit, but Phoenix with a reversal. Irish whip to their corner and a reversal again by Sami Zayn. Planting Phoenix. But again, Saber taking care of it. And again, Saber saving his partner. Referee got in the way a little bit. Looking to finish Sami Zayn here, possibly with a Phoenix driver. Is that animation still a little kind of weird a little bit? I don't know. I, I don't... <laughs> I saw Phoenix trying to go for the Phoenix driver there, but... Something must have happened. Sami Zayn cannot make a tag, though. And finally, the White Dragons are able to beat Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, but what an intense matchup. To start off the show. Again, that match could have gone either way, and those men must be tired as hell right now. But it's all worth it because they won, so all that work for that win. As we have Roman Reigns going up against the demon Finn Balor. Now, Roman Reigns was really close to a title opportunity. 
really close to facing Edge for the RCW World title, but now AJ Styles is RCW World Champion, and he's got to put that behind him. But I don't know, maybe maybe Finn's feeling a little uh, a little bit of bragging rights after beating Miles in quick fashion in a Hell in a Cell match. But I. I don't know, it just doesn't seem like Finn would let something like that kind of go to his head and whatever. He doesn't seem like that type of guy, but I don't know. I don't know what he must be feeling, but it's the big dog's time and he is here. And he is ready to go up against the demon. Again, many of you had told me that you thought that Roman Reigns was going to be the one to take home the RCW world title but sadly he came up short when AJ Styles hit Braun Strowman with a calf crusher and Braun Strowman tapped out out of everybody that I expected or that I thought might have tapped out to it no offense to any of the other competitors in that match but I honestly thought that Braun Strowman was the least likely guy to tap out or to be pinned in any fashion. But Roman Reigns trying to prove that he's ready against this man, the Demon. We're just going to get this matchup underway, folks. It's, it'll be Finn Balor versus Roman Reigns, and we are underway here in... Roman Reigns plows Finn Balor over to start off this match. And a couple quick strikes from Roman Reigns as you hear the RCW Universe behind the demon Finn Balor. And a side rush and leg sweep to Finn. And Roman is on fire to start this match. But Finn coming back with an enziguri there to take Roman Reigns down. The reversal there. Ooh, tried, tried for the kick there. But unable to get it. And... I expect this match to be nothing short of awesome here. It's a fist right to the back of the head. Finn Balor and Finn Balor trying to get some strikes in for his own, but Roman Reigns seems to have an answer for it and a belly to belly suplex. By Roman Reigns and there's a reason why he's called the big dog. And I think we're seeing it right here. Going to the middle rope here and a DDT on Finn Balor. Roman Reigns making quick work of Finn now. Stomping away at Finn Balor. Now just a couple of fists to the face of the demon and a stomp for good measure. And Roman Reigns has barely been touched in this match. Again, looking to go for the DDT again and a DDT again to Finn Balor. And Finn is in a world of hurt right now. And Roman Reigns is not stopping. He's not stopping and looking to... For a Superman punch here. Superman punch to Finn Balor. Wow. Look at all this momentum that Roman Reigns is getting right now. One... Two, and Finn kicked out. Finn has got to find a way back in this match. and He might have just found it by checking that kick there in a DDT of his own to Roman Reigns. And Finn is on the comeback, and he looks to get fired up. And here comes Finn Balor. Ducks under Pele kick to Roman Reigns. Now working on the arm of Roman Reigns now. Come on, you really think that's going to pin Roman Reigns? Come on. You and I both know that the big dog is called the big dog for a reason, and I doubt a small move like that's going to pin Roman Reigns, but that might have pissed him off. That might have pissed him off. Looking for a Samoa drop, but inverted DDT. By Finn Balor there. and Taking down Roman Reigns. I think Finn is going for something big here. It's definitely not the coup de gras. That's way too early for this. 
But Finn's calling for Rowan to get back to his feet and a missile drop kick from the top rope here. Roman, Roman is in big trouble. I think Finn's going for it. Finn is going for it. He's going for the coup de gras on Roman Reigns. And Roman kicked out at two. Roman kicked out at two. And a knee to the face of the big dog Roman Reigns and Finn finding himself back in this matchup. After a very, very slow start, Roman Reigns was dominating a huge part of this matchup here. And I think Finn started to realize that and looking for a belly to belly, but no, Finn able to reverse that one. And both men just staring at each other, but Finn gets a quick punch. An Irish whip to the corner here. Irish whip again to the corner. And Roman Reigns is dazed a little bit. What's Finn Balor going for here? Sunset flip. And Roman, again, finding himself in some trouble here. Now working on the legs now of Roman Reigns and driving the knees into the canvas. And you can see Roman grabbing at his knee there. Maybe in a little bit of pain, perhaps, and he checks that kick. Finn Balor tried to look for uh, that kick there to the to the face of Roman Reigns, but a couple of shots to the midsection. Roman Reigns and just a slap to the chest of Roman Reigns and an Irish whip to the corner. Reversal by Roman Reigns, though. What's Roman Reigns going for? Looking for a suplex here. Finn reversed that. No. Now Finn's in the driver's seat with an Irish whip to the corner. Are we going to see it here? Oh, I thought we were going to see that missile drop kick that famous Finn Balor, but a drop kick to, to Roman Reigns. I thought we were going to see that famous uh, missile drop kick into the corner. Finn's a little glitched here. He might be. I don't know what he's trying to do. Maybe he's just walking it off, walking the paint off. I don't know. Taking a little stroll. Finn's got to watch himself, though, make sure he doesn't get too tired. And Roman Reigns being the smart man, rolling out side to the ring here, taking a breather from the demon, able to jump right back in it and getting Roman or getting Finn down. Excuse me. Looks for a kick there, but Roman Reigns shoves him away, and a belly to belly by Roman Reigns. And I think we're gonna see this again. I think we're ready to see it again. Another Superman punch from Roman Reigns. Another Superman punch. No, Finn, Finn reversed. Finn reversed. Roman reversed. And a big boot to Finn Balor. Just dragging Finn now. The lifeless body of Finn. And I think Roman's going for a pin here. He's looking to finish this too. Roman or Finn Balor kicked out. Oh no, I don't know what Roman was going for there, but an elbow right to the face of the big dog Roman Reigns. Clothesline to Finn Balor. But Finn Balor looks like he no sell that and got right back up in a belly to belly to. Ro to Finn Balor, again, I'm confusing these two. Jesus, I can't think straight because this match is just killing it right now. And a Superman punch again to Finn Balor. But I think I know what we're going to see here. Roman Reigns looking for the exclamation point in this matchup. Spear! Spear to Finn Balor! Looking to win this matchup here. And he does. That spear must have knocked out the wind. Of oh, Finn Balor there. I know it would knock me out for sure. Or a spear from Roman. Heck yeah, man. Um, 
Finn tried his hardest there. You saw him come back towards the middle of this matchup, but the damage done to Finn at the beginning of this matchup, which seemed like just a mauling by Roman Reigns, but Finn was able to sort of even it out towards the middle of the match, but possibly due to Roman Reigns being so fresh after the mauling of Finn Balor at the beginning that it was just too much for Finn there, and uh, as you can see, that spear there, that monster spear that laid down Finn for good there, and the big dog is back where he belongs in the wind column there. As we continue on, and we have Steve Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin, for to be exact, and he is having to say a few words, maybe possibly about um, CM Punk's attack at RCW Anarchy during or after his match from The Undertaker, a no-holds-barred match in which Stone Cold was able to win that against the dead man. This should be very interesting, though. Um, you know, it was great bringing CM Punk here, inking the deal with CM Punk, allowing him to be here. I guarantee you guys are going to like to see him, to see him, especially after the debut. You guys love, you guys love that. You got all your feedback from that was fantastic, and I appreciate that. Uh, any type of feedback, any type of criticism feedback is, is always appreciated, as long as the criticism is constructive. That's the only good criticism, is the, is the constructive one. Stuff to make things better, not just criticizing. Cut the music. If I have to wait another second to confront my demons, I might just snap and let me clarify that for a moment. Those demons are not within me. I've got some problems going on in my head, but no, 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 no. The demons I'm confronting tonight are much more vile. These demons, well, this demon has been pestering me, gnawing at me, and I've... Got no chance left but to slay the beast. Is he talking about Brock? Because Brock isn't a part of here. Stone Cold, I hate to break it to you. One superstar really pisses me off. I can't stand his voice. I can't stand his face. I can't stand the way he looks. I just want to punch him in his big, dumb face. Just smash it in until you can't recognize him. I want to destroy him. Big, dumb face. That doesn't seem like you, Stone Cold. CM Punk, quit acting like a little punk and come out and face me like a man one-on-one -on -one in this ring right here. In front of all these people, I'm going to teach you the hard way to get out of my pack. And just like I said, CM Punk, or excuse me, Stone Cold, hasn't let go of that attack. And I think CM Punk is going to answer to the challenge here. Well, I don't really know what challenge Stone Cold might have in mind, but he's answering the call. Not a Either way. And here he is. C.M. Punk. Chicago made punk. C.M. Punk. The best in the world. Whatever you want to call him. But here he is. And I think he's going to have a lot to say here. Let's just see what that has to say. I'm so sorry to interrupt this. But I'm fair, fairly sure everyone, will, everyone who matters will agree that we've had enough of this. Rather, I think it's time to show the world just what a real superstar looks like as opposed to what you've got going on right now. So do the world a favor by shutting your mouth and stepping aside for a second. Sounds like a lot like CM Punk, just a little bit more uh, cleaner, I guess. You're rather impressive. Did you know that? I've been wary of... I'd, I'd be more wary of going up against a superstar like me. You either got a lot of guts or very little brains. I'm not entirely sure which. I guess we'll find out when they're both spilling out on the mat. Wow, is that a threat there, Stone Cold? Is that a threat? I don't think he's going to take that kindly. I don't think there's any reason why we need to sit here and argue for the rest of the night. We all know I'm the most awesome force in RCW and there's no one that can stop me. Well, of course, that is, uh, that is for sure. <laughs> that is for sure something, uh, that uh, CM Punk likes to run around a lot, being the best in the world.
Wow, Stone Cold saying interrupting somebody like him is not a good idea. Stone Cold, a veteran in the wrestling business. So he actually knows how this works. Management is a lot of things, but one thing is, is they're not stupid. They see my reaction. They see the reaction I get when I come out here. They see you and me standing in this ring, and they know what people want to see, so let's give them what they want. Well, that doesn't sound like Sam Punk at all, but maybe he's just complimenting me, I guess. I don't think you understand how this works. We don't do what you want to do. We do what I want to do. What I say goes here. What I say goes here. You and I aren't through yet. But if we're going to fight, then we'll do it when I say we do it. I'm the one with the clout around here, not you. I don't think you are, Stone Cold. I don't think you realize that I'm the guy that makes the matches. I'm a bit confused exactly what is the point you're trying to make. You've been out here talking for a while, but you have yet to actually say anything. If your goal was to bore the entire audience to tears, then you're off to a strong start. Wow. A little bit of roasting going on there. Looks like Stone Cold still talking, still talking. In the face of CM Punk. Getting right in the face and a headbutt to CM Punk. Stone Cold has had enough of that. And now these two going out in a brawl. These two going out at it in a brawl. The talking is over. The time for talking is over. I don't know what CM Punk is trying to do here, but whatever it is, it's not really helping this case. And what's up, Samoan life? A stone cold taking CM Punk down. See, I told you guys, the time for talking with these guys is over. And wrenching on the neck of CM Punk is these two just a couple minutes ago, or seconds ago, rather, were just talking at each other, and now CM Punk forcing the head no. These referee needs to separate these two as CM Punk gets tossed into the announce table. And the referee needs to get some control of those two as we're seeing this rivalry heat up as we have Noel Diamond with Tessa Blanchard going up against Ruby Riot and her Riot Squad. Now, it's been a while since we've seen uh, Noel Diamond uh, here on RCW. I've been trying to find the right place for her, and, um, you know, sometimes it's difficult as a person who uh, does the scripts for this show and has a lot of help with this show. Uh, it's, it's really hard to, like, get all the superstars here, and uh, sometimes, you know, there will be superstars that you don't see for a while. Um, usually that's mainly because I don't have any storylines or anything entertaining to throw them in. And um, I'm the type of guy that does not like to waste a match because I think a lot of times with WWE, they'll throw in a match for like, that'll last for like two seconds. I know that's like you know, a bit of an exaggeration, but it won't last any for anything. We know it's, it's so predictable, whatever, we know what's going to happen. And, you know, the match just seems pointless. And I don't want to do that on RCW. I just don't want to throw in somebody, you know. It'll be different, you know. It'll be different, you know, if we have the room for it. You know what I mean? Like, if it's like a pay-per-view where it's like seven matches and, you know, there's something cool that you guys might want to see at a pay-per-view. Like, it's different in, in that uh, respect, but... You know, in terms of RCW, like, there's a lot of storylines that I have to keep straight. And a lot of times, I don't have the room to throw all of the, all of the guys, all of the superstars on here. But it's good to see Noelle Diamond back here as she takes Tessa Blanchard from Impact, from Impact Wrestling, with her at ringside. As, Riot, as the Riot Squad, obviously with Ruby Riot. We have Ruby Riot, and then you got, you know, Sarah Logan and, the, and Liv Morgan here. I've been good Samoan life. I'm sorry I haven't gotten to your thing yet. Um, but, uh, obviously, Ruby Riot is going to have her Riot Squad, and I think, really, Noelle Diamond is just trying to make sure that she gets that insurance there. So we have the Riot Squad coming out here, and... If you watch Raw at all, you guys know 
exactly how the Riot Squad likes to do things. And Ruby Riot looks to upset Noelle's welcome back party, or crash it for that matter. As the referee has to keep an eye out on all of these ladies on the outside here and the ladies on the inside of the ring, but, you know, there's no telling what the Riot Squad will do here. As Noelle, Noelle Diamond starting off this match very well here, considering she hasn't been here in a while. A kick right to the face by Ruby Riot, and again a slap with disrespect from Noelle Diamond there, just a slap right to the face of Ruby Riot, and a little bit of a leapfrog over and tried for a drop kick, but didn't connect on that one as Ruby Riot with the reversal. Ruby Riot looking for something and forcing the face of Noelle into the middle turnbuckle there. And a knee right to the face of Noel and Ruby again looking to spoil the comeback party of Noel Diamond and a spine buster to Ruby Riot. Looking to pin Ruby Riot and only gets a one count out of that. Ruby still very fresh in this matchup. But I expect Noel to kind of play with it. Chip on her shoulder a little bit as she hasn't been here in a while in a Hurricane Rana. To Ruby and Noel trying to get back to her vertical base there. Ruby just a couple shots to the back of Noel and now forcing the shoulder right into the turnbuckle. And punishing Noel there as Noel kicks out at one. And I don't know what this sudden attitude is from Ruby Riot, because these two haven't really had much of the chemistry or anything like that. Maybe it's just the way Ruby Riot rolls. I have no idea. I have no idea. Ruby was going for something big there, but a Samoan drop by Noel, and Noel is on fire right now. Being very smart, dragging her to the middle of the ring, so nothing really happens. Nothing too fishy happens. Looking for an, looking for an arm bar here. The Iron Monarch, she likes to call this one, though. Looking to force Ruby to tap, but realizing that Ruby was close to getting out of that, she lets go of the hold. Very smart. On her part, and a little bit of a rake to the eyes as the referee didn't see that, and the referee's a little bit distracted. And DDT to Ruby Riot, and again, well, just on fire here, but Liv Morgan distracting Noel Diamond here, and Ruby able to take advantage. We haven't seen anything from Tessa Blanchard. You know, helping Noel in any way, but Noel trying for a Falcon Arrow. Ruby reversed it though. A back suplex there. I don't know what Ruby's going for here, but she's going to the top rope here. This can't be good if she lands this, whatever this is. Splash! On a Noel Diamond, and Noel has to be hurting there. And just gets her on the two count as. Noel is able to get the shoulder up. Lifts her up, though. Looking for something big here. A little bit of a Hurricane Rana there. Nothing too special. Now working on the leg of Noel. And as you can see, Liv Morgan is loving the hell out of this right now. Looking for the riot kick, as she likes to use this a lot. But Noel able to reverse the riot kick. Noel able to reverse the riot kick. Now, looking for the Iron Monarch. She tried this once before, but I don't know. I don't know. She has to really work on the arms. Is Ruby able to easily break out of that? Ruby's arms are still very fresh. She's got to work on that arm before locking that in, making sure that she can get the most damage out of it. 
And again. Liv Morgan. Now, Sarah Logan hasn't done anything. It's mostly been Liv Morgan that has been the huge factor in this matchup here. As, you know, she's been distracting Noelle Diamond and sort of paying dividends for Ruby Riot here. Ruby Riot going to the top rope again. Possibly looking for another frog splash. No, calling her up to her feet here. Knees right to the face. Jumping Meteora there. And Noelle able to kick out of that one fairly easily. Just a kick right to the midsection. Of Noella now working on her arms now. And again, Ruby Riot just going for these pins here. I'm, I'm thinking it's just a little bit of frustration. She's frustrated by how long this match has gone by. And I believe she thinks that Noelle Diamond is less of her, so I think I think at this point she really just wants Noelle to just stay down and go away. And she tries to submit Noelle Diamond here, and Noelle able to break out of that one fairly easy, and a Samoan drop. Ruby Riot and a leg drop to Ruby Riot and now looking to go after the arms again, but Ruby Riot able to reverse that. Ruby was going for something big there. A couple of shots. Knees to the face. And a big knee. Again, trying to get her down with a spinning back fist, though. And now Ruby Riot looking to go up top again. Looking to get that senton, perhaps, but unable to as Noelle rolls out of the way. Struck gold! By Noelle Diamond, and that might have that might just be it here for Ruby Riot. And Noelle Diamond gets the win. Surprised that Liv didn't try to distract the ref there because she distracted Noelle throughout this matchup. Maybe she thought that Ruby got it. I don't know. But Tessa Blanchard just kind of sitting there and enjoying herself, and that's it. It's Noelle's comeback party was able to, <laughs> to end real well there with a win as we move on to our next matchup, and we have a Falls Count Anywhere match between EC3 and Aleister Black here. Give me a second as uh, I have a drink here in the little pouch in my backpack that I need to grab. So we have EC3 and Aleister Black as Aleister Black looking to revive his singles career after breaking up with Finn Balor, which they were a tag team for quite a while, the team known as Black Hole. And Finn, I think it was Aleister, you know, that kind of turned on Finn Balor, said, you know, I'm kind of done with this. I don't want to, don't want any part of this anymore. I just want to do what I want to do. I am in the top one. And I don't blame them on that one. I mean, unless you're like some decorated tag team like the Hardys or the Dudleys, you know, your career is kind of on hold a little bit, you know. Like, I would prefer Kofi Kingston as a WWE champion over tag team champion any day. You know, and I think that's what we're going to get. Or I hope that's what we're going to get. You know, but I always preferred Kofi as a single star over being with a tag team. 
in the top 1%. EC3 is here on RCW. You may have seen him in the Elimination Chamber match for the RCW World title in which Randy Orton was champion at the time and, and Edge won that title. He defended that title against AJ Styles at RCW Anarchy in which AJ Styles is now the champion. But he will face the root of all evil, Aleister Black. So we don't. So we can get right to this matchup. Falls count anywhere. Remember, still to come, the Outlaw Sisters versus Marielle Rogue and Rosemary in our main event here. It's EC3 for that swinging neck breaker there. And remember, falls count anywhere. So it doesn't matter where these two men go. No disqualifications, no count outs, falls count anywhere. Referees got to follow them. Wherever they go and... Referee taking a little bit of time here, but... You know, at least he's on the outside with them now. It's Aleister Black. Looking for something big here, but... EC3 able to make the reversal. Forcing the head of Alistair into the canvas, but Alistair able to reverse and a drop kick. Taking EC3 down on the outside. Now, the difference is here, with it being false count anywhere, doesn't matter if it's in the RCW universe, backstage, whatever, false count anywhere, you know, that's the whole purpose of this matchup. But other than that, you know, there's also the potential to deliver more damage on the outside as... As the ring is, it's a lot more forgiving than the outside is. So it's definitely gonna hurt more. Especially if one of these two use a table and suplex into the corner there. And EC3 is on fire right now, but Alistair again reverses. EC3 reverses. And a backbreaker to Aleister Black. And EC3 is definitely feeling it. Oh, look for a big move there. DDT! And Aleister looking for something really big here. Possibly the running... The running knee that he does. And a knee right to the face. Of EC3, but Alistair not going for the cover. I mean, I would have at least tried for that. As EC3 rolls out to the ring here. And a kick. Black Mass. I think that was Black Mass out of nowhere. Black Mass out of nowhere there. And EC3 kicked out. EC3 kicked out of Black Mass. I didn't think he was going to hit it that quick. But he did anyway. Now these men don't really use chairs or kiddo sticks that often. But they do have that. Um, do have that nice ability to them. And EC3 looking to take this out. Into the RCW Universe. We're going to grab a chair. Just tossing it. And the chair kind of goes away. And now these two are fighting on. Into the crowd here. And the referee's not too far behind. Remember this is false count anywhere. And a fist right to the face of Aleister Black, but EC3 grabbing a trash can and using the trash can. 
on Alistair Black. And, and now going after the legs of Alistair as Alistair is able to push EC3 off of him for the moment and a stomp right to the chest of the top 1% EC3. EC3 with a shot to the midsection. Snap suplex. I gotta figure out what his signature is called real quick. <laughs> Forget what it. Oh, front face lock STO. Okay. I know what his finisher is, though. As Alistair Black able to reverse that front face lock STO. Uh oh. EC3 in big trouble here is Alistair going for Black Mass again. Black Mass again on EC3. Falls count anywhere. One, two. No, EC3 kicked out at two. I thought Alistair had him there. Probably not the first one. The first one was kind of early. And now EC3 is busted open. First one was kind of early. However, he might have had him there. But I guess not in a monster clothesline there. By the top 1% EC3. And a knee right to the face of EC3. Remember again, our main event still to come with the Outlaw Sisters versus Marielle Rogue and Rosemary in a tornado tag match. No rules, no disqualifications, and you gotta know as EC3 breaks the table with a basic body slam there. And a knee right to the back. No disqualification, no countouts, all women in the ring at the same exact time. It should be very brutal, and, but yet very special, as it will be the debut of Rosemary and Marielle here on RCW. And again, EC3 once again doing a little bit of taunting. Looking for that front face lock STO once it, trying to connect with it and he does finally. Uh-oh. I think he's going for something really big here. Looking for top one percent through the table. Top one percent through the table. The referee taking a little bit of time to get over here. One, two, no, Alistair kicked out. That might have been just enough time. And now that pissed off EC3. EC3 is mad using the Kindle stick on Alistair Black. Now grabbing it again and now trying to use it again and... Wax him again with the kindle stick. And now just leaving the lifeless body of Alistair Black there in the darkness as EC3 looking to go back to the outside as you can see. Alistair finally able to get his bearings up a little bit and make his way back to ringside. EC3 going for something there, but Alistair able to reverse and look at that for that front face lock STO again and connects on that. The question is, where is our ref at the moment? Oh, there he is. Right there. Uh-oh. Looking for top 1% through the announce table now. 
Top 1% through the announce table. Looking to pin Alistair Black now. One, two, three. EC3 wins. Wow. I thought it was over after that. After that black mask there, I thought it was over, but he, EC3, as you can see here, kicks out of that. Man, that's a real bad camera angle. Um, and then he got the front face lock STO there in the RCW universe. That kid loving it there in the top 1% through that table there. I thought that was it. Referee took a little bit of time getting over here for the count, which I think might have been the reason why Alistair kicked out. Then he got the front face lock STO at ringside. And then one final top 1% through the announce table. And there is your winner, EC3. What a match. But here we go, guys. We got our main event coming up here. Where it is the Demon Assassin, Rosemary, and Marielle Rowe going up against the Outlaw Sisters. Now, Rosemary might have orchestrated the, the match or the, the attacks on, on Luna and AJ Styles and Chris Danger attacking Brian Outlaw. She might have been all behind this, but you've seen the tweets. You, And if you've been keeping up with RCW and uh, the Discord. By the way, I do have a Discord for those of you that haven't joined it yet. I will enter it in chat real fast. Um, it is the number one place to get in contact with me. I'm 100% on there usually most of the time. Um, I... I I have, we have lots of, we have quite a few people in the server now. We have about like 12 to 13 people, I think, or something like that, total. Um, it's just another way for you guys to contact me. I know some of you don't have Twitter, some of you don't have, you know, Instagram, whatever, all that crap. So, you know, I thought create a, create a Discord and make it easier for all of you to contact me and, and to, uh, um, to, uh, you know, stay just to stay in contact. And uh, you guys can uh, message each other on here, message my co-writer John, message any of us or any uh, member of our little community that we're building here and uh, leave your feedback on the show. If you just watch an episode and you want to leave your feedback on one of them, I strongly encourage that. Uh, we strongly encourage uh, feedback on the episodes, good or bad, you know, as long as the criticism is constructive criticism. Um, you know, I, I, I really think the best criticism is constructive criticism, you know, telling somebody that you don't like something without attacking the person. Seems a lot more efficient than, you know, attacking the person and saying that something sucks and whatever and just like really you know not help because that doesn't really help anybody um when i always try to give constructive criticism especially to my um you know to the people that helped me write the scripts because i got my co-writer john i got my assistant gm jacob you know all of those guys that helped me write the scripts and helped me make the show what it is you know i talk with them you know we we talk back and forth and we have a discussion we want to have a civil discussion and that's the key word civil um you know, we, we don't want any, you know, BS drama because there's already enough of that on the internet nowadays. So, you know, it's, um, we don't like that. We don't like that. And, uh, we want, uh, we want things to be very civil and to be, um, I guess, appropriate is, for lack of a better word, um, and... You guys can... That's just the way that you guys can contact us. Uh, you guys... Uh, I always get notifications on my phone in that in that Discord when you join it. 
you will find that there is a bot in there that will tell you when I'm live and when I post a video to my YouTube channel. It sends you notifications. I plan to use like other things for it because I found out that that bot, you can do other things. Uh, which is pretty dope, honestly. You can do other things uh, with it, like polls and stuff. So I'll, I'll look at some of the other features of that bot and maybe start utilizing that. Maybe that might be an easier way to get you guys to be a little bit more engaged instead of having you guys, you know, just straight up message me. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to find other things that are engaging. We also have uh, a currency for the channel called Titles, and you guys can... Find out how many titles that you have on the channel by entering this command right here. You will see it. It is exclamation point titles. See, I have 65,000, but that's because it's my own channel. So, of course I have that many. Um, you can use those titles to redeem special rewards, uh, like creating a match for a pay-per-view, creating a superstar's attire for a pay-per-view, one-on-one um, uh, -on -one discussion with me, about RCW storylines and lockdown storylines um, in the middle or the end of a season. Um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, oh, a create, create a wrestler for the universe. Since so many of you like to create wrestlers and, uh, you know, I can't really include everyone you know, and it's really difficult to include everyone, I thought, why not make that a reward, um, you know, to kind of give it more incentive um, for people to stay in the stream and to communicate with other people in the stream. Because I feel like when you have things to offer your viewers, you know, when you're more engaging with your viewers and you have things like currency and these tiny little things that, you know, that they can do, like, you know, games and, and these little things with, like, the chat pots and stuff and all that. Like, anything to make the viewers feel more engaged, I think, is the right thing to do as a content creator, as a streamer, whatever. And I think it really helps out the channel, and I think a lot of you, like, highly enjoy that. And that's why I'm going to explore the Me6 bot, which is the bot that I use for the Discord, to, uh... To, uh, you know, check out some of the cool features of that. But I thought I'd just do a little spiel on that for those of you that are new or um, for those of you that, you know, don't really know what goes on in our Discord there. But let's get this main event underway here. As we have Marielle Rogue making her debut match at, along with Rosemary. We have Rogue Danger there as Danger definitely has assigned himself to the <laughs> to the Rogues. I think you can clearly say with that that uh, that the Rogues have sort of made a little bit of an alliance with Chris Danger and like I said, Rosemary sort of orchestrated the the attack uh, with uh, all the attacks that happened on last week's episode. I made sure to like fully design their entrance and, and to get things going as we have Sky coming out here. We have her coming out and how gorgeous she looks as she's looking her, to herself in the mirror there former RCW Women's Champion. Uh, former, and I think she was former NWE Women's Champion at one point, too. Uh, but we've seen the Outlaws do a lot of things here on RCW, and Sky Outlaw wanted this match. She told me that she wanted to make Rosemary and Marielle Rogue pay for what they have done to her, her sister, and her brother, and everything that's transpired last episode, you know, she doesn't like... The thing is, with the Outlaws, they don't really care, but they always have a reason for attacking somebody. They don't just ever just randomly attack somebody like that. Um, they'll never just randomly attack somebody uh, out of nowhere. They always have a good reason behind that, and they don't believe in 
in that sort of thing. But we have the RCW Women's Champion Luna Outlaw making her way out here. She's carrying that title with pride. And if you like what you see here, feel free to follow the channel. And uh, we welcome you here. Uh, we are on the grind to affiliate so I can get you guys some really cool badass emotes. And uh, if you guys have some fun here. But the RCW Women's Champion... Luna Outlaw is ready to go, and I guarantee you guys are too as well. So let's get this underway here. Tornado tag match. Both women in the ring at the same exact time. Rosemary and Marielle versus the Outlaw sisters, and we are underway here. And Marielle tried for something real cool there, but I guess it didn't really help her. And Luna... Looking for a falcon arrow, and Rosemary going on a Sky Outlaw, working on Sky Outlaw there. Remember, these ladies can go to the outside. This is a no disqualification. Tornado under tornado tag rules, and Marielle with a punch right to the face. Of Luna Outlaw and Luna Outlaw is in big trouble here and Rosemary with a German suplex. And I would hate to be on the receiving end of that uh what does she call that? That um that something with a, it's like a figure four lock or something, middle rope lock. And I forget the actual name of it at the top of my head, but I hate to be on the receiving end of a spear or anything or the Red Wedding or anything like that. I, I would not like to be on the receiving end of the Demon Assassin's uh, move set by any means. It's now Rosemary working on Luna as Sky going to the outside here. As Marielle turning her attention to Sky and Launching her on the outside here. And Rosemary the Demon Assassin is in huge trouble here. Is Marielle grabbing a bat? But going after Luna stopping the pin is Sky Outlaw looking for something big here and a roll up! A roll up! And I thought. Marielle got Sky there in a hair whip all the way across the ring here. And Sky is in huge trouble right now as a miss with that slap there. And a kick to the chest of. Sky and Sky is in huge trouble here now. As Rosemary and Marielle are making quick work of the outlaws here. And Rosemary tossing Luna back into the ring and Remember how crazy these tornado tag matches can get? Is now Sky's on the comeback and a blackout on Rosemary. Looking to pin Rosemary here. One, two, three. And the Outlaws have gotten the best of Rosemary. And Marielle is. Sky was working on Marielle there. And they crushed it. That was crazy. Let's go to some of the highlights here. 
As you can see, Rosemary and... No, it might be a little tough to see here. But you can see that roll up there by Marielle trying to get Sky to... Kick out, and then there was the blackout there on Rosemary. Oh, great. The game crashed, didn't it? Yep. <laughs> of course the game crashed. The game had to crash. The game had to crash on me, guys. That's what happens when you go to the highlight reel and you try to look over things. The game crashes. But the Outlaw Sisters, way too much for Rosemary and Mary Ellen. You know that I think Rosemary and Mary Ellen bit off a little bit more than they can chew there. Um, I, I think they totally made the wrong decision. Um, by going after the outlaws, by end, by going after the outlaws, messing messing with the outlaws, doing whatever it is that they do, they they made a bad decision there, and that is on them. Um, I I really think that they didn't think it through. No matter and. No matter how they made their statement, I wouldn't have done it that way. Um, like, if I was in their position, I wouldn't have... I would have not have messed with, um... Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> we had Noel Diamond, we had EC3 win that one, and then we had... What was it? Luna beating those two? There it was. Yeah. Um, so I just simulated everything to make sure that it... Went well there. And uh, there we go. Uh, so I apologize for the game crashing. It, that happens... I think that's just a bug with the highlight reel right now. When you go to the highlight reel um, after like a show or whatever. It just happens to be that way. Um, but thank you guys for joining me. Uh, you know, what do you think uh, in regards to, you know, Mary Ellen and Rosemary, you know, teaming up together to take on the Outlaw Sisters and them coming up short? And do you think that Rosemary and Mary Ellen bit off a little bit more than they can chew there with by messing around with the Outlaws, like choosing... They're very first people to, like, mess around with, uh, you know, with the Outlaws. Like, they could have chosen anybody on the RCW roster. They could have chosen anybody. They could have chosen, uh, you know, AJ or J, J Rogue could have chosen Edge or, you know, maybe even Roman Reigns or, you know, somebody else to mess with. But no, he had to choose... The Outlaws. They had to choose the Outlaws, and I think Rosemary and Marielle and Chris Danger and Jay, they bit off more than they can chew. Because once you mess with one member of the Outlaws, you mess with all four of them, and I think I think Rosemary and Marielle realized that real quick. So let me know what you guys think about Rosemary and Marielle. You know, coming up short against the uh, against the Outlaws. You know, like I said, you know the Outlaw Sisters have been tag teaming together for a long time, and this is the first time we are seeing Rosemary and uh, Marielle tag together, or seeing Rosemary in a match here on RCW. Rather, we will see more action from the Rogues as well as Paige's return to in-ring action, and I think you know I don't think the Rogues are gonna quit. You know, once they start something, they finish it. And I don't think they're going to quit. 
Let me know if you guys think that they're going to attack anybody else. If you guys think that they're going to go after, you know, anybody else. And, uh, or if you think that there are any ways that Rosemary and Marielle would go to to get even further under the skin of the outlaws. And, you know, ignite this sort of, I guess, family rivalry. I don't really know if you would call it a family rivalry because it's only two of the rogues. But, you know, the rogues got Rosemary now. They got Chris Danger. And they got Marielle and Jay. You know, you know they, they got all four of those guys. You know, so the outlaws, obviously, they have each other. So is this a family war that we are witnessing? Is this, is this you know, the first battle of many? I don't know. Uh, that all remains... That all remains like too, um, too like narrow to speculate. I, I don't really want to speculate that. I don't really know what's on the minds of uh, the rogues and, and Chris Danger and what they're trying to get out of this. Especially Chris Danger turning on the outlaws and then aligning himself with the rogues. It's like you just turned on the outlaws. So what makes you think that you know the Chris Danger won't turn on the rogues? You know, uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, are we going to see Chris Danger, like, turn on the rogues at some point? I know it's early, too early to tell, um, but, you know, what if it's, what if history repeats itself? I, I, I don't know. I don't really know the mind of Chris, and I don't really know what's going on, but whatever it is, it can't be good. And with that said, thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, for another episode of RCW, once again, let's talk about this. Let's talk about Rosemary and Marielle Rogue. Let's 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 get down to the bottom of this and figure out what's going on. Um, and thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate all the follows, all the all the lurks, all the interactions that we have together on and off stream. It's fantastic. Um, you know, through the Discord and, and through the chat and everything, it's fantastic. And I and I love you guys. I absolutely love you guys. And, uh, you know, this show wouldn't be what it is without you, and I greatly appreciate it. So thank you guys for joining me, and I'll catch you guys on Wednesday for another episode of RCW.